Now, if you are familiar with Minecraft content creators at all, there's going to be certain names, certain creators that you just know about. Um, even if you never watch their stuff, they are just so well known that you can't be in the Minecraft community without knowing their name. And one such content creator is Dream. Dream is probably one of the most famous Minecrafters of recent times. Uh, he has definitely made his mark with uh, things like the Minecraft Manhunt uh, videos that he has done, and last but not least, the Dream SMP, which created this um, intricately detailed uh, story and lore that many millions of people have enjoyed and uh, come to love. Now, he, as a person, has had his share of controversies, and um, I I'm aware of that. I'm unaware of the specifics, and I'm not going to comment on that. This is not... I do think he is a very talented creator. Um, I don't really know him as a person, so I can't make a judgment call on his character at all, and this is not what this podcast is about, but I did think it might be interesting, and I put a poll uh, in, in one of the previous episodes asking what people would like to see. Uh, it would be interesting to see what um, Minecraft features inspired by Dream would look like, similar to how I uh, did a Minecraft update inspired by Mumbo Jumbo. So these are my ideas for the Dream update. So like I said, Dream is famous for two things primarily, as far as I know. He's famous for the Minecraft Manhunt, and he's famous for the Dream SMP, which is all about lore and storytelling. So Minecraft Manhunt is basically hide and seek in Minecraft. You have one person who's running, and you have uh, three or four people chasing them down, trying to get them before they speed run the game and kill the Ender Dragon. It's very fun to watch. I had a lot of fun watching his videos on this. Uh, very cool concept. The Dream SMP, probably one of the most famous SMPs uh now, um, on par with Hermitcraft, I would say, is all about lore and storytelling. They've crafted this sprawling, deep lore story that many people have just been hooked on. So when I think of things to add to Minecraft that are inspired by those things, um, I'm thinking about things that can help in hide-and-seek situations, whether you're a seeker or a hider, and then things that can help with storytelling. So for things that are more for hide and seek, the first thing that I thought about was uh, having tamed wolves be able to track players. Now, I'm not sure how exactly this could be done. Maybe there could be some sort of bloodhound situation where you give your tame wolf something that another player has come in contact with and they pick up the scent somehow. Um, maybe there's some sort of thing that you can play with with the aggro uh, function of a tamed wolf where you can trigger them to aggro somebody without them having to be hit or attacked by them. Um, I'm not sure, but I do think it would be really cool to use tamed wolves to actually track down players and by extension have them be able to track down certain kinds of mobs as well so that you can actually use them in hunting situations. Now, for the other side, if you're not the hunter, but you are the runner, you might want something to help you escape tight situations. So, my idea is a smokescreen splash potion. It's not a blindness potion. A blindness potion, you give someone the effect of blindness, and no matter how far they go, they are still blind until the timer runs out. For a smokescreen splash potion, you throw the potion down, and the air is all of a sudden full of thick particles that you cannot see through. Um, and that would give you the chance to throw an ender pearl or run away and escape while your pursuers are still trying to search for this dense cloud of splash potion. So tamed wolves that can track players and smokescreen splash potion. Those are my two ideas inspired by the Minecraft manhunt. Now, as for ideas inspired by the dream SMP, these would be things that could help us develop lore and tell stories while we are playing Minecraft. Now, one thing that I think most players would love to see is if Mojang made it so that all items are placeable in the world as block forms. So that goes for books, bread, 
apples, uh, you name it. Any item that we have, we would be able to place it in the world as blocks. Um, and this would help us tell stories because we can then really decorate any sort of scene that we wanted to convey certain stories. Maybe you could have a house that's been ransacked and you throw a ton of items all over the ground and it looks like the place has been, uh, burglarized or something, or maybe you want to depict a battlefield. And so you have swords and arrows sticking up out of the ground and shields just sort of thrown everywhere. Um, I, things like that would be really, really cool to have. And I think building in Minecraft would just explode. It really would with all the details that we would have if this were the case. The next idea is that we would have more wearable items that are more than just armor, more than just protection. And these items would just be decorations. So these would be things such as, I mean, coats and hats and, and shoes and pants, I mean, and gloves and things like that. Things don't, that don't really have a utilitarian uh, function but that are just more for decoration. Um, so this would be like the costumes that we would be using in our storytelling and role playing, um, things like that. So I think that having more type, you know, more kinds of clothing items and things like that would be really fun. It would make it easier to do role play and storytelling in Minecraft because we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to go back and forth with different skins and redesign different skins. As fun as that is, some people don't really like it as much. So having more options for customizing our appearance in Minecraft might be really cool. Now, recently, Mojang has revealed that in 1.20 update, we are going to have customizable armor. We're going to have armor trims, and everyone is super excited about this, including me. But I really think that they should go further with this. I want to see customizable weapons. I want to see customizable horse armor. While we're at it, let's throw dog armor in there. I want to see customizable elytra. Give us trims for these things so that we can live out the stories that we're telling in Minecraft. Um, because things like this, so like, I get attached to my tools in Minecraft. If I craft a pickaxe, I'm going to try to keep that pickaxe for as long as possible, provided it's a diamond or a netherite pickaxe. Um, so to be able to customize this beyond just renaming it something, Revel's favorite pickaxe or whatever, I, I, would, I would want to change the way it looks so that when people see it, they know that that pickaxe is the one that I use and it's mine. Also, it might be a really easy way to tell the difference between a fortune pickaxe and a silt touch pickaxe if you can make them look different. Um, I think that being able to customize weapons, tools, elytra, horse armor, those things really should be added to the game and it would help us be able to tell our stories and craft our lore even better. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, send them to me at digstraightdowncast at gmail.com. You can also connect with me on Twitter. I'm at rebeljc underscore 92. And until next episode, guys, keep digging straight down. I will see you at Bedrock. Thank you.